So let's talk about week 144. And what does week 144 mean? Well, today is December the 6th, 2022. And myself, Real Estate Raccoons, the spring team, all of us, aka they're all me and the collection of awesome people that make up our entire family here, have been tracking the market since March 2020. Why is March 2020 significant? I mean, do I really need to tell you? But I, but I will in case it's not triggering a memory of COVID. That's when everything kind of changed. And I felt as though there was a need for context with all of the information that was out there. So I dug in and started tracking the market week over week. And to this day, there is no other organization, team, individual, whoever that has dug in this deep on specific communities in Toronto from the urban markets all the way up Kingston Road to the luxury markets in Rosedale, Forest Hill, Lawrence Park, um, Leaside, Young and Eglinton, Davisville. You can see on the blog the specific communities that we do cover. Now, I know I've been promising the Durham region. I know that is something you all want and it is coming. You just have to give me a little bit more time while I organize all of that. So. Now that we got that out of the way, week 144 is here and I'm not going to make this a typical market update post. I think I have used all of my words when it comes to describing the market and hopefully by now you understand that there is a path to success in real estate, investing, ownership, selling, whatever it is that you're interested in, regardless of what the market is doing. So. I just choose to imagine the possibility of success and optimism in this time where there are a number of people out there, agents, economists, other stakeholders, so to speak, in the industry that seem to be taking a different approach and really scaring some people unnecessarily. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what the Bank of Canada might do tomorrow. Of course, the final uh, rate announcement of 2022 is coming on December the 7th at 10 a.m. I'll make another video about that and post it tomorrow. Um, but I also want to talk about three red flags to look out for when you're consuming real estate information from other real estate professionals or just people in general that have taken an interest in this topic, just to make sure you're not getting caught up in anomalies or, you know, little uh, one-off type occurrences who some of these creators are putting out as a normal kind of um, a more common occurrence. So we're going to dig into that in a little bit. But real quick, let's talk about the Bank of Canada and what they might do tomorrow. Um, the general consensus, it seems, um, from mortgage professionals and economists is that there's going to be a small raise tomorrow of 0.25% or 25 basis points to the uh, uh, lending rate, which means that you know, banks will follow suit and increase some rates. But because bond yields are reacting a little bit differently right now, there is some downward pressure on fixed rates. And in some cases, we're getting fixed rates below 5% for renewals and things like that, not necessarily for newly originated mortgages. So reach out to your mortgage professional to see what that means to you specifically. But some people out there are saying there will be a 0.25% increase in percent 0.25% increase tomorrow, and then an announcement that that is the final increase for the next however many months. Um, but I don't think it's too unreasonable to assume that we'll have an increase tomorrow and then a further increase in January. And then let's say a six to 12 month halt in increases once that terminal rate is reached. And, you know, hopefully we have some good inflation news. Hopefully unemployment doesn't get too out of whack. And if you watched last week's video, you can see my comments on where I think we're going with unemployment, etc. So now let's dig into the real topic that I want to talk about today. And you can look at all the numbers and you can see that listings have pulled back. You can see that supply is like insanely low in all communities. But I've talked about that week over week. And hopefully you get that message right now that Toronto does not have a bunch of panic sellers that are throwing everything on the market the moment they hear of an interest rate hike. We've gone through enough of them right now that if somebody has not been triggered to put their property on the market by now, they're probably not going to do it. And that is evident in the statistics right now to go from 600 
125 houses on the market just two months ago, down to 436 in our urban markets, should speak volumes. And we'll see if that trend continues into 2023. And I suspect that it will, as long as people manage to hold on to their properties if they're losing their jobs. And we'll see how deep that impact is. But only time will tell. So um, how do you tell if you're getting correct information from a, uh, a real estate creator? Number one, I would look at a red flag where a particular creator is really focused on uh, talking about anomalies and making them fact. Uh, an example of this could be, you know, many people bought properties in the first quarter of this year, but they didn't actually close on them. Sorry, they didn't actually close on them until, you know, the summer or the fall. So likely the property that they purchased in January, February, March of 2022, by the time the closing date came around, the property was probably worth a little bit less than when they purchased it. A little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the actual market that that property was was uh, transacted in. So um, you'll have a lot of people out there, a lot of creators that seem to have a following that are highlighting these properties like, look, so and so bought this property. Um, they weren't able to close on closing day because the appraisal didn't work out or their situation changed or interest rates changed their affordability and they couldn't close on it. And here's that same property on the market for a lower price. See, I told you this is happening. Be careful. Beware. This is happening more and more and more. It's going to be a problem for the market and so on. That's the kind of stuff that I see as a huge red flag when somebody is taking an anomaly, not contextualizing it and telling you that this is what is now normal in the market when that couldn't be further from the truth. Could it be possible that a property, somebody wasn't able to close on a property and that same property that was sold for say a million dollars in February is now on the market for $900,000 and sells for 890. Of course that could be possible. But if you put it into context, that is happening a very small percentage of the time. And when it does happen, that seller has access to that first buyer's deposit as a potential damage. It's not easily transferred to the seller that way, but there is a process for the buyer to bridge that gap between what they originally sold it for and what they resold it for after the original buyer defaulted to make the impact less harmful to them. So it's the context that seems to be missing from a lot of those conversations that raise a huge red flag. Like what's the point in highlighting one person's terrible situation and actually lying about the fact that it is happening so much so that this is now the market and how it is. I don't see the benefit in that. It creates fear. It taps into people's emotions. It creates this echo chamber of pessimists getting together who have likely never really invested in real estate or talked about real estate or investing in any meaningful way. And perhaps using their experiences of 30, 40, 50 years ago as a reflection of how bad today is. So red flag number one, look for creators or people that are putting out information talking about anomalies and making it seem like how the norm and how the market is generally performing. Red flag number two is when you have uh, an agent who isn't tracking the market in real time. You have a number of people that are putting out information, let's say a week or so after the market has um, closed for the month, so to speak, and the Toronto Real Estate Board or whatever real estate board you, you are in um, releases their monthly figures. And you'll have all these infographics come out from brokerages and from agents and from whoever that talk about the previous month's information as if that's what's happening right now. But in reality, in 2022 and beyond, things are just moving a lot faster than they were before. So when monthly data was fine to track maybe 10 years ago, it hasn't been a good indicator of what's going on in the market today based on uh, movement in certain neighborhoods, etc. So if you're speaking to somebody or taking an information from somebody who's using 
macro data. So a too big a sample size from like, let's say the entire GTA or Canada or the 416 or the 905 or whatever it is, I would immediately question what that information you're seeing could mean to you as somebody who lives in an urban environment or in a rural community or wherever you happen to live. And I would also look at that data to see when it was processed. Is it weekly? Is it telling me what happened last week in my specific neighborhood? If it is not doing that, then you need to dig deeper into that information and either ask that person who is presenting you with this information what that means to you on your street, in your neighborhood, wherever you happen to be, or you need to move on from that person and focus on a group that is really hyper-focused on up-to-date, real-time information in the neighborhood, in the market that you are interested in. For example, if you are a buyer or seller in any of our urban neighborhoods from downtown to all the surrounding neighborhoods like Ronsi, High Park, you know, uh, Etobicoke to uh, Scarborough to uh, the beaches to Leslieville to Riverdale to, you know, the Kingston Road Corridor all the way to Highland Creek, Pickering, Durham, Richmond Hill, like all these neighborhoods where we have specific expertise in, you need to be reaching out to people that are drilling down into those specific neighborhoods and giving you the data that is relevant today for the type of property that you have. It's good to look at this general broad data as an indicator of how overall the market might be performing. But in reality, the market is likely performing very differently on your street, in your neighborhood. And it's really important to look at what's happening week over week over week. Because, I mean, do you think that it's possible to spot a trend when you're waiting for an entire month of data to come out and you're reporting on that data six months later? Personally, I don't think that's possible. But... I mean, I believe that it is much more, I mean, it's much, much easier to spot trends and to see which way the market is moving if you're looking at it week over week. Because those small changes that you see, three or four small changes in a row, I can pick up on as a trend versus reporting monthly data, comparing it to the previous month. It takes too long to put those patterns together. And by the time I've put those patterns together, you can't make a proper decision. You're not going to make the smartest decision. And you know, if you're anything like me, you are somebody who likes to make smart decisions. I'd assume that is you. So that is red flag number two. Is the agent you're talking to drilling down very specifically and more frequently than monthly? Maybe I'll start reporting day to day. Who knows? But for now, Real Estate Raccoons is all weekly. And I'd encourage your commentary below to let me know how you are in using my content. Um, and the third red flag. This one is the victim. The one that is the woe is me, the I told you so. This one ties into that first red flag quite nicely. It's the I told you so and you didn't believe me. And they focus on this anomaly and they try to paint the entire market with the brush of that one particular anomaly. And they feel victimized by all the hate they got when they put that message out there. But in reality, they got that hate because the message was fear mongering nonsense. It was not reflective of how the market is generally performing in the very specific communities. It's usually a commentary on a broad set of data that really means nothing to anybody specifically, but it gets a lot of attention and creates that echo chamber. Um, the red flag, this red flag number three agent, the victim, just loves when bad things happen. And I just can't live in that space because it allows them the opportunity to highlight that bad thing. And it's just not, number one, not a good place for your head to be as a human being. Number two, it's not reflective of how the market actually is. And number three, it's not really the truth. And that it's the truth for that one particular scenario, but it's not the truth of the market. And that's where I really feel strongly that some people are being misled into believing that things are a lot worse than they are. And it's, you know, another common thread in this victim red flag type of uh, info source is agents out there telling you that prices always go up. And honestly, I really don't know of a single agent who has ever, with any sort of truth or, you know, at least without any sarcasm, said the market always goes up. You can take some sound bites from things that I've said in the past and say, look, well, you said that. 
Um, well, I'm not really talking about month over month up or, per or perpetual up. But when you zoom out on that graph, and if you go to the blog, you'll see that I have a graph from 1975 until 2022. The trend is upward, of course, long term. And we've talked about this over and over again. Long term is where it's at. That's where your head should be when you're a real estate investor. Long term, you will end up ahead. So this type of content um, producer, creator, whatever you want to call them, the red flag, aka the number three, the victim, is somebody who likes to focus on what's happening in the market today and tell you, see, the market doesn't always go up. But there is not an intelligent agent on this planet that has ever said the market always goes up in the context of month over month or week over week. The whole idea there is to drop the day trader mentality and start focusing on building a strong real estate portfolio that will give you a strong retirement. That's what it's all about. Not that real estate's always going to go up. You should always buy no matter what. I firmly believe that you should always be a buyer. But... There's a lot of context there. You can take that soundbite and run with it and say, look, Ara is saying market's always going up. You should always be a buyer. But it may not be right for you. You, whoever you are listening to this, buying may not be right for you. Completely over, over leveraging yourself is, is not right for most people. And that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the tremendous opportunity that exists in market like this, markets like this, if you have the ability to take on risk, if you have the cash flow to handle the ups and downs in the short term, because real estate prices don't always go up, but long term they do. And that's the important thing to focus on. So hopefully these red flags give you a window into where I think you should focus your attention in terms of real estate content. So let's avoid those agents and content creators that are using anomalies as fact to paint an entire market with the same brush where that's not the case. We're going to avoid the red flag agent number two, who is using the old macro data and not drilling down in more real-time data and we're going to avoid that victim creator who sees themselves as this truth teller and everybody else is lying to you and telling you the market's always going to go up but they're the ones that somehow have this clarity that will tell you that see it's not always going up so we're going to avoid those three people the anomaly fact finders the um uh, the victims, and the macro old data users. So there's a lot of great information in the blog this week. Um, please dig in, check out the numbers. Like we've got 144 weeks of data there on the blog. You can go back to week one and read through them all if you want. Um, really would love to see your uh, commentary here. Comment below on the channel or where all the socials where you see this. Thank you so much for your attention. And um, Really enjoy the holidays this year and try and, you know, tune out some of that noise. Let's make a pact together to not watch the news for the entire month of December. Can we do that? Let's do that. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Real Estate Raccoons out.